Have you ever reshot your whole setup because it just didn't feel right? Have you ever moved everything around to try and get it looking exactly how you want it to? I've definitely been there. And as you can tell, again. But this time I've got something new to help me dial in this shot that I like, and it's Dehancer. Welcome back to my photography journey. My name's Steve, and today I'm showing you how I use Dehancer, which is basically a film emulation plugin for DaVinci Resolve, to color grade this, my new ACAM shot in my office. So if you like these kind of natural tones, trying to be a bit more cinematic, then you'll probably want to watch this. I just wasn't loving the space. I didn't like how things came across on camera or what it looked like. So I changed the angle. I adjusted the lighting. I've again simplified the background and finally it kind of feels a bit more like me again. I first heard about Dehancer a little while back. Um, I took a colour grading course by Darren Mostyn and it was on there that he mentioned that he uses it and I almost bought it but fast forward to now they've reached out and asked if I would like to try it and give a bit of a review of it so that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to take you through step by step how I graded this shot, this kind of talking head shot and I'll go step by step how I use Dehancer, what I like about it, what I don't like about it and kind of go from there really. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and this is the timeline that I have got that I'm just editing. So let's have a look at this. This is just me and I've got a grey card. I recorded this quickly the other day. So that's looks like an OK place. So what we're going to do is grade this and I'm going to use Dehancer as well and show you what it adds and how to use it. So first of all, let's go into our color page. And then in here, this is where we're going to do our work. This is where we're going to build our node tree in order to do our grade. So very similar to photography, you adjust the different colors, different areas of the image and things like that. It's just a slightly different process because you're using nodes rather than layers. Um, again, all of it is non-destructive, so you can try things, undo it and that kind of thing. Um, but what we're looking at in here is our scopes and this will give us an idea of the colors in the final image and how things will look. So I've got two vector scopes. Um, they have the different regions on them which correspond to the different colors and this line here is our skin line so that's where your skin tone should sit. Uh, this one is zoomed in times two compared to this one. And then we've also got our parade, which is our red, green and blue channels. And then we've got our waveform, which is our kind of overall image. I'll be referring to these as I go along, but I'm just going to move them onto my second screen for the moment, basically so they are out of the way. And then this is where we're going to do our work. So uh, we are going to build up a, a node tree. And actually I'm going to cheat and use one that I have created already. So I'm just going to right click on here, apply grade, there we go. And then that has brought in those nodes. So let's just close that gallery so everything's a little bit bigger. Let's move that across. Right, so these are the nodes that we are going to be using. So don't worry too much about a lot of this. I'm going to concentrate on Dehancer, which is this one, the halation side of it and the bloom side of it down here. These color space transforms, I'll talk about this more in the future because I think it is quite interesting, but basically giving us a good starting point from our raw image. If we turn that off and that off, that's what our raw image looks like. But then we turn these on and it, it adds a bit of, bit of something extra to that raw image. What we're going to do is work through these four nodes to begin with and just get everything looking as it should do. So for our exposure, we are just going to move some of our tools just to make things look right. We are brightening up the image basically here. And then our balance, we are looking for our skin tones to be um, on our skin line for our vector scopes. So I'm going to use this offset tool and then just move the very center of it, 
looking at our uh, vector scopes just to make sure that our skin tone isn't looking too blue, too green, too orange in there somewhere, I think. And then our contrast, we want a little bit more contrast on here. So I'm going to brighten it up a little bit and also darken some of these areas a little bit as well. Brighten up again and darken, there we go. So that doesn't look too bad. And what you can do is you can turn off each of these nodes in turn to see where we were. Let's turn off our contrast, turn off our balance. And what you're doing is checking that with each one that you're using, it gets better. So saturation, do we need any saturation to this? Let's have a look and increase our global saturation a little bit. So it's not increasing a huge amount, just very subtle steps. There we go, so that's on, and that's off. And I think it does look better with it on, so that's what we're going to keep. That's our basic image done there in these four nodes. So the signal comes in here, goes through this color space transform into our exposure, our balance, our contrast, our saturation. So at this point, we want to have a nice video signal. We want things to look really good. And then from there, we want to add our kind of filmic cinematic looks, which is where Dehancer comes in. So you can see I've labeled this node up already with Dehancer, but let's go into our effects. And then this brings up our settings for that Dehancer uh, node. I just move that a bit so we can see it. You have a lot of settings. So let's scroll all the way down on here. All of these different settings are within the Dehancer uh, node. Let's have a look at them. So first of all, you have got a film profile. So let's go into this and you've got all these different films. Rather than your digital video, being captured on an SD card through a completely digital system. These are your analog films. So let's go with a big brand name like Kodak. So you pick one on there, you tick to enable it, and then you have a look and see what that does to your image. So you can turn it off and turn it on, and you can see it's kind of made it slightly cooler. And what you can do is then you can change it to other ones, Kodak Vision 3, 250D or 50D. And you can see that each one of these will have a different look to it. And it's not just Kodak, you've got lots of different ones. So let's go for a Fuji Natura 1600. Now, if you know about the films and things, then you'll know um, a bit about each of these. I don't. So what I find really useful is this playing with them and just seeing what I like and what I don't like. So what I have liked so far is, how does this one look? There we go. So this is Kodak Pro Image 100. We can turn that off and back on and it just lights things up a little bit nicer. And so I quite like that. I'm going to leave that. And then we've got different options. So we can change our contrast boost, gamma correction, color separation, color boost. So all of these little bits and pieces can be adjusted. So you, again, just tick enabled. Want to boost our contrast or reduce our contrast, we can do. Double click to go back to kind of a midpoint, our gamma correction. Don't notice too much of a difference with that. Again, double click to go back to normal. Uh, color separation, not noticing a huge difference with that. Color boost, we will do though. There we go, that's very much saturating things. But again, we can turn that on and off. Um, what I did quite like is our contrast boost. Just slightly. 
there we go and it just darkened it up just slightly i quite like that so then we can work our way down the list we can use as many of these or as few as these as we want um so our film compression you can see that that actually makes a difference to these pictures behind me more than anything else that's on and that's off I quite like that look with them on it's a very subtle change and that's what is good about this is you, the things that you change can be very subtle but then make a big difference when it comes to the end um, so again with our expand similar kind of thing we can make changes to that that's doing very similar things to the one that I used earlier so I'm not going to use anything on that then our print profile so we can choose different films to kind of emulate being printed on different films. Now Kodak 2383 is quite a famous uh, movie uh, print film. So I am going to use that. So we'll turn that on. And then you can see that makes a very big difference to how our picture looks. So you can turn it on and off. And there we go. I like that with it on. And we've got things like film grain. All of these different things, like I said, you can turn them on and off to taste. What makes it really good is that you don't have to know much about it. You can just turn them on, turn them off, decide whether you like it or not. You don't need to know what um, exactly what one of these is. You can play around with them and you will get used to kind of what they look like, what they do. So you can turn them on and off. And with this one, look over my shoulder here and on the side of my face, you can see the grain on the wall. That's turned on and that's turned off. Let's turn it back on. And uh, what I want to do is make sure I'm using the camera originals here. Um, so we've got the best quality video. So it's grainy here. Um, we can change that to the ISO 50 or to ISO 500 and you just get a slight change in it um, so I, I quite like that then we've got halation and bloom I've got those on two separate nodes so I'll come back to those in just a moment um, film damage we can enable that and we can increase the strength And so you can see it making changes again. You've got different options in here. So you can see on here, we've got some film damage. And when you play your clip, you'll see the film damage kind of comes and goes. That's not something I particularly want at the moment. So I'm going to turn that one off. All of these different options. I'm not going to go through all of them because we'll be here for hours. But all of these different options you can turn on and you can turn off. As you may have seen when I was playing that back with this enabled. So let me turn off the Dehancer nodes at the moment and just have a look at how well this plays back. It's quite nice and smooth. The picture looks quite nice. And that's remember just from these four basic nodes. So we'll stop that and then we'll turn Dehancer on and let's just look at our playback. It's dropping frames. It's not as smooth, which means this Dehancer node is using a lot of the computer's processing powers. Now, this is a Mac Mini M2 Pro chip. And generally speaking, it works really well. I don't have any problems with it when I'm using DaVinci Resolve, Lightroom, Photoshop, anything like that. And it's just this um, Dehancer plugin that is causing it to slow down. That can be a problem when I am exporting this. So I've exported a couple of projects now using Dehancer and it takes a lot longer. Uh, when I've got these nodes on with these effects on them, it takes a lot longer to render out the final videos for YouTube um, or any other projects that I'm working on. And that can be a problem for me at the moment. It's not, um, but it is something that is a potential to 
cause a problem in the future. So that is definitely something to think about. So like I said, I want halation and bloom on different nodes. So let me just turn it on and off. And halation, you can see it brightens the image up. So let's turn that one off and on. So it warms it up slightly, brightens it up slightly gives a nice look to it. And then Bloom, with Bloom, check out the light here. If you turn it off and on. Actually, that's a little bit too strong, I think. So I'm just gonna bring it down. There, somewhere and again, off and on. So it's very subtle on there. I like that, I like that with that on. And there we go. So that's our three nodes that we've got here. So our Dehancer node with most of the other film bits in our halation and our bloom. What I try to do is separate them out so that again, I can turn them on and off. I can uh, change it completely, delete it, reset it if I want to. And I can reset each of these nodes individually so I don't have to reset the whole grade. But let's just have a quick look full screen at this. There we go. So you can see we've got the grain, we've got the uh, kind of glow around the light. We have got um, nice contrast in there and it looks a lot more cinematic than it did uh, beforehand. So if I turn these three off again and again look at it full screen, that looks good. I think it looks nice, but it doesn't look as nice as it does with the Hanser added to it. What I love the most is the kind of character that it adds and it's it's kind of a bit more real, um, a bit more cinematic to use a very overused term. Um, and they've also got a mobile app and that can do photo and video. So I'm gonna review that and post a video on that soon as well. And if this helped, hit like, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments whether you've tried Dehancer, whether you want a deeper breakdown of what it can do. And as I said, I've got the review of the mobile version coming soon. And if you decide to purchase Dehancer, use the code CREATIVEFIELDS and you'll get yourself 10% off. So I've left a link to that down below as well. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've learned something today and I will see you again next time on my photography journey. Bye.